So with that, what, because, you know, a lot of times as leaders will ask that question of, do you have any questions for me? And I love it when someone does because that, you know, that does communicate to me that they've thought about this beforehand. Um, what are some great questions that the interviewee can ask before they leave the room? First off, anything that is absolutely critical for them to know that they, in terms of um, accepting a job or finding uh, or even going further in the process that they have not been able to find in their research. So if I've got certain determinants that um, are going to be deal breakers for me on this job, I've got to get those answered. So that's one category. Typically beyond that, if you've gotten all those questions answered such that you know if this job were offered to you, you would accept it. Then the most accepted questions are the ones that are, if I got into this position, how do you view my first 90 days? How would, you know, or something like, I've read the job description and my understanding is that the primary focus is this or this or this. Is that exactly accurate or, and you're asking this typically of the hiring manager, do you have a different view of that? Because what I've found often is that they use whatever they post is just the standard job description. Right. And the way the manager wants that job done may not be reflected in that. Yeah. So it's a matter of getting into the, the person's uh, head and saying, I need to see this the way you see this to make sure it's really a good fit for me. And then on the back of that, you can say, that's exactly what I was looking for for these reasons. And you've got to support it. You just can't say, oh, that's what I'm, I'm good at that. And that's what you've got to say. Let me tell you why what you just said is exactly what would fit me right now and would give me an opportunity to contribute the most to the company. And so you've got to make that connection. And that's another thing that a lot of people don't do when they when they were asked the question um why should i why do you want this job well, it's well because let me tell you all the things that it satisfies in me this is not really about you this is an exchange this has got to be this is what i'm looking for let me tell you what you get when you get me let me tell you what i can do for your company that's when an interviewer wants to hear solve my problems so another question can be you know i know that you have by talking to whomever X number of issues that have gone on in the company, you know, how do you view those being that type of thing? So it's a matter of going in with a plan of saying, this is perfect for me. It's the place where I believe capitalizes on my strengths, uh, on my motivations. It's what I really want to do, where I feel I can contribute the most. What I'll be able to do for you is, and, that's, and, and a lot of people don't add that second right. part. So it's like, well, that's great that you get everything. What do we get? Right, right. As the hiring person. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we had a question come across online, and this is a great question because even as we start to open back up, there are still a lot of companies who, you know, they're not going back to the office or they realize it isn't, you know, a necessity to have someone work in the same state and be able to come into the office. Um, so the question is, how do you go about hiring virtually so we're living in a world where you don't necessarily need to be in the office or the same state i i don't really see that as being much different than the way people have been hiring all along and it's just a matter of okay yeah i don't i don't see it as being any different i would structure i think the volume of responses that you're going to get obviously may be overwhelming for you so the first thing that i would put in place would be a tiered process where I may have, I may post questions online and then have people respond to that. And so from that, you're probably going to be able to call out a number of people just because they're not even in touch with it. Then you may want to go to either a virtual interview or a a phone interview second. Again, so you're not spending so much time through the process, whether it be three or four different different steps people have to complete. Maybe it's even submitting some documentation, having them write something. I don't know what the job is that the person's talking about. Such that at the end, you really, even if you're gonna hire somebody virtually over a, a Zoom call or something like that, they've already gone through three or four processes. And so what you're wanting is now with this volume of people that you're gonna be getting, I've this person has qualified themselves 
at several steps. And I think you're going to need that comfort level be, unless you're going to be able for the last step to bring them in face to face. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's possible, but I would, you know, a lot of companies have done that for a period of time now. Some companies still have not. I think in this environment with the number of people and wanting to hire somebody virtually, putting all those different steps in, uh, answering questions online, let's do a virtual interview, let's do a phone interview, you're gonna have a different comfort level. And if they got through all that, you'll probably be good with that, uh, where you would not have been if you only tried to do one Zoom call with a person, right. and then you've gotta do how many. So now you're trusting that I called out all the bad eggs with the resumes or whatever you ask them to provide for you. 